When Lemonster City Council President Mark Bodanza sat down to write a book about Johnny Appleseed, he was surprised to find how little he knew about the man behind the legend. First of all, vegetarian, very concerned uh, for animals and plants, didn't want to injure anything, didn't believe in grafting apple trees, which was in vogue, and he was an incredible minimalist. He carried it to the extreme, to the point where, you know, he dressed in coffee sacks. John Chapman lived in Lemonster until he was six, eventually moving west to Longmeadow, Massachusetts with his family. His father remarried uh, after he uh, exited the uh, Continental Army, proceeded to have a whole bunch of other children living in a very small six or 700 square foot home. Chapman headed out on the frontier, eventually making his way to Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana. He started off by just planting trees and kind of waiting for the seedlings to grow and then grabbing them. As the city of Lemonster celebrates 250 years since Johnny Appleseed's birth, they're looking back with pride. Local history approaches people different than the iconic national stories because they can go and see, they can reach, they can touch, they can understand a little bit better what it must have been like for those early folks to live in this same environment that they live in. Many simple farming practices still hold true today. We try to keep it family oriented. Every farm has their own unique little thing we do. And um, Oz is trying to cater to like just the family. Here in New England, we are lucky to have pick your own orchards scattered throughout the region. In fact, there are more than 75 here in Massachusetts. In Bolton, a pick-your-own orchard remains true to its humble roots. Lori Stevenson is a third-generation owner of Bolton Spring Farm. What began as a dairy farm in the 1800s transitioned to an apple and fruit orchard in the 1930s. My grandfather purchased it back in 36. And eventually, my mother and father took it over in the uh, early 70s and turned it into the pick your own operation. My grandfather was not happy. He figured everyone was gonna ruin the trees, but it's worked out beautiful. What's here? Oh, we have about 30, 35 varieties of apples. We grow peaches, plums, nectarines, pears. This small operation gets big time help from employees like Del Roy. Picking the apples. Mm -hmm. You don't want to pull it like that. You don't want to do that? No. You okay. You pull it and twist. You pull it and twist. Right. We have fantastic people that work for us, and we'll be um, getting three more guys from Jamaica. They come up on their visa. They are the nicest people, and they know what they're doing. Apples aren't just a fall treat, says Stevenson. In fact, many people miss peak picking season. It's starting to get cooler later in September, so people that used to come out like say the first or second week of September and now coming out later in the month. So a lot of times they're looking for certain apples and they're like, well, that already happened, but it's not getting cold enough for them to start thinking about apples yet. Some apples in New England are ready to pick as early as July. According to the Massachusetts Fruit Growers Association, around 450 farms tend more than 3,000 acres of apple orchards in the Bay State. That translates to a lot of apples, nearly 50 million pounds to be exact. Macintosh is big around here, but then we'll go into Macowans is the other big one, and Honeycrisp is a big one. Stevenson's favorite? Macowan or Gravenstein, which is an old, old variety, which we have in the stand right now. And Lori says they have a great crop of apples this year at Bolton Spring Farm. They're already open for pick your own, so head on out. They were delicious. I, had, <laughs> I might have had a few. Um, and the city of Lemonster has been celebrating Johnny Appleseed all month long. They had a festival a few weeks ago and a parade. So, you know, happy birthday, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. Still ahead, the fruits of her family's labor.